Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our fourth virtual service from Aynan. I trust that you are all managing to cope with the strange situation in which we find ourselves. I'm so pleased that we've been able to connect with one another through the wonders of the internet. And I would just like to say a big thanks to Matt Phillips and Joe and Ben Dinsmore, who have put so much into making this happened. So thank you guys. We, we really do appreciate it. In Romans chapter five, we read this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Last week, we were thinking about the death and resurrection of Jesus. And here, Paul is reminding us of the wonderful benefits which flow from our faith in that death and resurrection, causing us to have peace with God, to know God's grace, and to have hope because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the amazing hope that we have in you because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that uh, that hope brings us peace and comfort. It helps us to know your love and it opens us up to your Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to pray that we would be people who, who are people of faith and peace and hope and your love and people who are full of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that we will be a people who demonstrate those things to those around us, to our family and our friends our neighbours and our colleagues. We pray for you, Lord, to watch over our fellowship. Help us to be one another people, even when we can't meet with one another. Help us to be encouraging one another, building one another up, praying for one another, supporting one another. Please bind us together, Lord, in love, even though we are physically separate. We especially, Lord, want to pray for those in the fellowship who are involved in uh, providing medical care for others at the moment. We lift up to you Andy and Emma and Gareth and Rebecca and Jackie and Leanne. Lord, we pray for you to keep them safe. Help them, Lord, to be witnesses for you in that stressful situation in which they find themselves. We want to pray, Lord, for the people around us dealing with issues of loneliness or mental health problems or the fear of this disease and perhaps the fear of death. Lord, would you be close to those people? We want to pray, Lord, for those who've lost loved ones, pray for you to comfort them. And Lord, in these strange times, may people turn to you for truth and peace and comfort in these strange times. Lord, we pray for people facing financial issues over reduced incomes or the prospect of unemployment or the potential for businesses to fail. 
We pray, Lord, for those who are poor and for the most vulnerable in our society. Watch over them, Lord, we pray. Lord, in all of our circumstances, help us to look to you. You are the source of our hope and our peace and our love. And Lord, we worship you. Let's sing together now, worthy of every song we could ever sing.
After our recent focus on the Easter story and the events of Palm Sunday, of Good Friday and Easter Day, we're now continuing our series on Psalm 91. This is an amazing psalm. It's full of God's love, care and protection for us, his children, for those that are his and belong to him. I know that many of us have found this psalm so encouraging in these difficult times. Firstly, to remind us, let's read the verses we have looked at so far. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He will surely save you from the fowler's snare, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. And under his wings, you will find refuge and his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Last time we focused on how God brings us protection, comfort and care. And today we're going to look at verses five to eight. What it means for each of us to be in God's care and protection. And what difference does that make to our lives and circumstances? So reading from verse five. You will not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your right side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Verse five starts with a very bold statement. You will not fear. This is only possible if God is your shelter and refuge. It is God alone that gives strength and courage to his people. The difference for us is God. We have almighty God with us. But what is our actual experience? When we are afraid, when we're stuck deep in fear, when, when fear seems to overwhelm us, it's perhaps an indication that our view of God and who he, who he is has gone wrong, has gone awry. Perhaps we're, we're missing something. Perhaps our view of God is not what it should be. Are we falling short of proper trust in God as our protector and our comforter? Well, Psalm 91 offers absolute and complete security promised to us in the midst of difficulty, trial and terrible danger. You will not fear. God, by his grace, will keep us from distressing, disquieting, distrustful, damaging, debilitating fear. Even in the middle of the greatest dangers, our full understanding of this will keep us from staying in fear of being afraid without cause. And faith in him will keep us resting and abiding in him under the cover of his wing and with him as our shield and fortress surrounding us. Not to fear is an incredible blessing. And not to live in fear is the gift of God to each and every one of us. In our lives, the, the Lord may permit trials and tribulations and difficulties. They may happen to us. And as we read in the Bible, so many of those that have gone before us endured great difficulties. But what we learn in Scripture is that as his children, we know that everything is in God's control. And that he is always with us. And we believe and know that he is able to deliver us. And that is why we can know the absence of fear. God surrounds us every moment of every day. 
Verse 5 and 6, it talks of the terror of night, arrows by day, pestilence in the darkness, plagues at midday. The psalmist represents all kinds of destruction that could come in all kinds of circumstances. He throws everything at us. They can come by night or by day, in darkness or at midday. They can come as sheer terror or by arrows of affliction. They can come as a pestilence, as a destruction. The point is this. Whenever it comes, however it comes, God is willing, God is able, and he will always be ready to defend us. Just consider this, to know, to really know that we are protected by God Almighty means that we have perfect peace. And where there is perfect peace, there is no fear. Just as light expels the dark, so peace expels fear. Isaiah 54 and verse 17 puts it so beautifully. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. The terror mentioned in verse 5 is an extreme form of fear. We must understand that fear is the complete opposite of faith. If we trust God, we have an extreme form of faith and there is no terror in extreme faith. Verse seven continues that a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. The psalmist wants us to know that God's protection conquers any odds. Any eventualities or probabilities, God's protection and care can be so specifically focused that it can preserve you amongst thousands, even tens of thousands. Spurgeon says that no evil in the strict sense of the word can happen to those who are the Lord's, for everything is overruled for good. Whether in this life or the next, whatever befalls us passes through God first. No disaster, no illness or difficulty gets past God. He walks with us and surrounds us and covers us in his presence. Never mind the external circumstances. Regardless of the raging storm, to stand where God is standing, to walk where God is walking, this is the greatest joy we can have. And this is our calling to be and live in him. Verse eight carries on. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked in contrast to the protection of his children, of his chosen. God reveals to us that those who reject him have placed themselves outside of his care. God's people are told that they will only see but never experience his judgment and punishment that is reserved for those who defy him. We are encouraged to look at this truth and know beyond any doubt that God knows those who are his. And his care of you is powerful and meaningful. What wonder to know that we are fully known by Almighty God. Those who know God set their love upon him and by faithful prayer, we call out to him. And his promise to us is that he will in due time deliver us out of trouble. And in the meantime, be with us in our trouble. The Lord will watch over and provide for all our worldly needs. And God will preserve our lives on the earth so long as he decides. For all my days are written in his book. 
Be encouraged this morning. The Lord has you safe. He's got your back. You are secure in him. Finish, I want to remind you of a recent sermon we heard from Mark chapter 5. It's the wonderful miracle in which Jesus raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. Let me repeat the words that Jesus spoke to Jairus. In a seemingly impossible and a hopeless situation, Jesus said, don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. May that be our experience. May that be our testimony this week. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are all powerful. That nothing can happen to us unless you permit. And that whatever you permit, you surround us and you are with us and you watch over us and your presence is all about us. Even in the midst of the storms of life, we are safe in you. Give each of us, Lord, I pray, that assurance today that you are God, that you are able and that you care and watch over your children. Help us, Lord, to carry that into this week, that we will not fear because you are with us. The Lord is my shepherd. I will want for nothing. You are with me every day. I will not fear. Lord, give each of us that revelation that you are surrounding us and watching over us and are with us, that you care for us and that your heart is for us. Lord God, please, by your Holy Spirit, impart that truth into each and every heart and help us to live in it, Lord. Help us to have that peace in the midst of difficulty. In Jesus' name, amen.
Easter with coronavirus. Something was missing this Easter day. Something had gone astray. Yes, we had chocolate. Yes, we had cake. But our freedom to choose had been taken. This virus has raged. Do your bit, every man. We fight as best we can. It's taken our loved ones before their time. No one's immune, whether millions or a dime. Our powerlessness over this enemy unseen stirs our mortal fears. What if I get it? What if I die? Am I prepared, ready to say goodbye? What perspective shall we believe and take? Real freedom here is fake. Our doors have been closed, our families elsewhere. The pomp and pride of man, now an invisible tear. What if Eden and the ancient tale, where mankind chose and failed, which left the legacy of being estranged, all we were designed for was rearranged? What if it's true and there is a God around that can help us become unbound? We're imprisoned in our homes all day, every day, but we are trapped in our hearts this Easter day. A rescue mission has been underway since the beginning of days to set us free from our fears and our scares. Jesus put it right, albeit his treatment unfair. So as we sit in our houses, captive at home, can we consider the Easter ode? That if there's a God who made you and me, perhaps today we can be set free. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'd just like to pray to finish off. So Father God, I thank you that no matter where we are, we're socially distant, we're isolated from each other, but we can still come together as a body of Christ. We can still come together as our church family to worship you. We pray for everyone we know, Lord, that is affected by this current situation, people who are working in the medical profession who are seeking to help people every day. We pray, Lord, for those who have been affected health-wise by this, those that are isolated and, and can't get out of their houses and can't have contact with people. We pray, Lord, for those who have been financially affected by this situation. And Lord, we pray for strength of character, strength of mind, strength of the body, strength of health as this virus continues. Lord, we lift up our friends, we lift up our family, our neighbours, the, the people who don't know you yet. We pray, Lord, that as they spend time where there's not a lot to do and they're looking for things, they're looking on the internet, they may be reading, having conversations with friends, looking at social media, Lord. We pray that things spring out of them, that just point them towards you, towards that first step on a relationship with you as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, we want them to know the peace that comes from knowing you. We thank you now, Lord, that you're the same as you were at the beginning of time and the same as you will be forever. Your love never changes, no matter how different the world is. We can always rely on you. Lord Jesus, we long for you to come in glory. Amen. So as our new tradition dictates, we'll now all turn on our webcams, we'll play some worship music and we'll give each other a wave. See you soon.